Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Hello. Hello, operator. 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 I want to send a telegram immediately to Box 13, care of the Star Times. Come to room 507, Hotel Belvedere. Please waste no time because this is a matter of life and death, perhaps for dozens of people. I am Dr. Phil. Waste no time because it's a matter of life and death, perhaps for dozens of people. I am Dr. Theodore Miller. Dr. Miller's telegram reached me at my apartment, special messenger from the Star Times. It was special, all right. Extra special trouble. And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, The Biter Bitten. Dr. Miller's telegram reached me at 5.15 in the afternoon. At 5.32, I was on the fifth floor of the Hotel Belvedere. At 5.33, I spotted the room number, 507. Then I heard... Well, what was it? I walked to room 507, and the sound became louder. I knocked at the door. Yes? Who is it, please? Box 13. Oh, good, good, splendid. Please do come in. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. You're welcome, but for what? Oh, I will explain. Uh, Excuse me a moment. Oh, certainly. Oh, it's no use. Oh, you're so right, Dr. Miller. Music like that does seem a little out of place. You're joking. I think you're the joker, Dr. Miller. Uh, No, no. Please forgive me, but I am desperate. Why don't you settle down and explain your telegram and this, this weird little concert? I am Dr. Theodore Miller. Yes, I know that. I'm Dan Holliday. Mr. Holliday, do you know what a herpetologist is? Yes, I know what it is. A snake expert. Exactly. So? Mr. Holliday, some place in this hotel, perhaps on this very floor, there is a dangerous snake loose. Are you kidding? No, no. I, I'd better explain. Yes, you'd better. I'm in town to address the medical society on the use of snake serums in the treatment of hemophilia. I brought a king cobra along. It has escaped. Here in this room? I don't know where it is. Dr. Miller, thank you for the telegram and the music. (laughs) I'm going. Uh, Wait, please. You're either a liar or you're crazy. No, no, no. Look. Look here. My credentials. The, The hotel manager will verify them. You yourself can check. You will see that I am who I say I am. That doesn't stop you from being insane. Yes, I know how all this sounds, but please believe me, we must find that cobra. I can understand your concern, but you've got to understand my position, which is one I don't like. If you want adventure, this is it. Granted, but... You still think this is a joke, yes? Yes, yes. Wait a moment. Hello, will you have Mr. Larkin come to my room? Oh, this is uh, Dr. Miller, 507. Thank you. Larkin? Who's he? The hotel manager. Look, Mr. Holliday, I swear to you that I'm telling the truth. Somehow, in some way, the cobra escaped. Look, here is the case in which I usually keep it. You can see for yourself that the catch is loose. I'm beginning to believe you. You must. It might be in this room? I don't think so. I've trained the snake. For what? Yes, When it hears the little pipe I play, it comes, because I always feed it immediately after the music. Oh, but this time it hasn't come back. No, I... But come in. Ah, Mr. Larkin. Have you found it? No, I have not. But, Mr. Larkin, this is Mr. Holliday. He is the man from Box 13. How do you do? How are you? Terrible. Mr. Holliday, I beg you to help us. But how? I don't know anything about snakes. When Dr. Miller told me what had happened... Well, you should have gone to the police. If we had, they would have evacuated the hotel. I can't afford that. Business isn't too good. And besides, Dr. Miller assured me he could entice the snake back with no trouble. So far, he hasn't. Now, wait a minute. You're risking the lives of guests in this hotel. That's a little more important than the hotel itself. I know, I know. But 
What guests we have on this floor and not in their rooms. And I'm sure the cobra hasn't gone far. Then you think he's on this floor? I'm positive. Then for heaven's sake, find it. Who suggested sending for me? I did. I saw your ad. It, it was just a thought. And it's one you can get out of your mind right now. The police ought to be told. But the publicity... You'll have to risk it. Mr. Holliday, I don't want to lose that snake. Well, you have already. I'm sure we can get him back. For five or six hours, he'll be somnolent. He ate just before we learned he was gone. Did you find out he was gone? No, the cleaning maid did. Yes, that's right. She saw the empty case. You mean to tell me you allowed Dr. Miller to bring that snake into this hotel? I didn't know he had it. Oh, that is so. I, I've taken the cobra with me before. I don't mention it because it is difficult to find the hotel. I can well imagine. Mr. Holliday, will you help us? How? I... I don't know. Dr. Miller. Yes? You're sure there's no danger for about five hours? I'm positive. All right, let's go to work. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holliday. I have the help looking on the other floors. I'll be back in a few moments. Mr. Holliday, you're very gracious. Mm-hmm. Now, you be gracious and tell me the truth, Dr. Miller. Truth? What do you mean? I don't believe that snake just got away. You think I'm lying? Yes. Well, I... Go on. All right. I believe someone deliberately freed the snake. But why? So it would strike me. Kill me. Uh-huh. I was wondering why an experienced man like you are would be careless with a dangerous thing like a king cobra. It's hardly likely you'd forget about a catch on the case. You're right. And, Mr. Holliday, I'm afraid. Who freed the cobra? I don't know. I think you do. I don't know. I swear it. I just don't know. All right. Meanwhile, the thing's loose. But what are you going to do? I'll help you look for it. But if we don't find the snake in one hour, I'll go to the police. <laughs> Well, I should have gone to the police right away, but there was something that told me not to. Anyway, we hunted. No snake. So I put in the call of the police and then went back to my office. There was something bothering me, but I, I didn't know what it was. But I took the trouble to do a little research with Susie's help. Here's what you're looking for, Mr. Holliday. Uh, this article right here. What does it say? I'll read it to you. Uh, Miller, Theodore E. Noted her... her... Herpetologist? Apologist. Famous for investigations into use and value of snake serum in various diseases. Hmm, let me see. Mm -hmm. That's Miller. Did you think it wouldn't be? I wasn't sure, but that's his picture. And that's the man at the Belvedere Hotel. Want me to read some more? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Miller has been associated for the last seven years with Dr. Roy A. Cunningham. Together, they Cunningham, have... huh? Does that name mean something? No, it just makes me wonder where Cunningham is now. But Why? Miller said he was in town to address a medical convention. He said nothing about a Cunningham. I just wondered why not. Oh, here's something about Cunningham. Should I read it? Hey, you might as well. Dr. Cunningham lost the third finger of his left hand as a result of snake bite. The finger had to be amputated. Do I have to read any more? No, that's enough, Susie. Okay. What are you thinking about? I don't know, Susie. There's something bothering me but I can't put my finger on it. You'll think of it. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Mr. Holliday, please. This is the police department. Oh, yes. Just a minute. It's for you. Who is it? Police. Oh, okay. Hello? Holliday, I thought you might like to hear something. Oh, sure. What? About a half hour ago, you reported that snake business at the Belvedere Hotel. That's right. What's happened? They find the snake? Uh-uh. I wish they had. Well, what's happened? What's the matter? Something strange happened at the Moulton Hotel, two blocks away from the Belvedere. Now, wait a minute. You're not going to tell me they found the snake down there. No, but earlier this afternoon, a man staggered into the lobby. Before he had a chance to say anything, he keeled over. He died. What's all this got to do with me? I'm coming to that. Okay, okay, but when? Right now. You reported the snake business at the Belvedere. That's point number one. And just a little while ago, the medical examiner finished his autopsy of the dead man at the Molten. Follow me? Well, I'm trying my best. Okay. Would you like me to read you the report? Yes, go ahead. The man's death was caused by a powerful poison which acted directly on the nervous system. Did you say poison? Yeah. It's from a protoglyphous snake. Well, what kind? In plain English, 
a snake that has fixed poison fangs, like a king cobra. Are you sure? I'm reading a report. Who was the man who was killed? We don't know yet. Any identifying characteristics? Why'd you ask that? Stop playing games, did he or didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. What were they? He was missing the middle finger of his left hand. Why? Just what I thought. What do you mean? Look, check and see if a Dr. Cunningham is registered at the Molten. If he is, I think you'll find that he's your dead man. Okay, Holiday, and since you know so much, how'd you like to drop around and tell us how that snake got two blocks from where he was lost without being seen? All right, I'll drop around later. But I don't know any more about it than you do. Gee, Mr. Holiday, you look kind of upset. Yes, I am. The man you just read about, Dr. Cunningham, died today from a bite from a cobra. <gasps> but I wonder how... Well, you said the snake was loose. Yeah, but that cobra had to go two blocks. It would have been seen. And even if he did make it, he'd have to be a pretty smart cobra to pick out Cunningham. Oh, you mean you think there's some connection between Dr. Miller and Dr. Cunningham? There's got to be. Both men are in town. Miller admits he had a cobra, then he reports its loss. Now, why were Cunningham and Miller staying at different hotels if they were working together? And why... And what? And, Susie, I just happened to think of what was bothering me. And now, back to The Biter Bitten, another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Sure, I happened to think what it was that bothered me. But it didn't tie in with anything. At least, not right then. So my first stop was police headquarters for a chat with the medical examiner. Yes, it's correct, Mr. Holliday. The autopsy on Dr. Cunningham showed definitely that his death was caused by venom. Possibly that of a cobra. Uh-huh. But no trace of the cobra itself. Uh, the Moulton Hotel's been searched. I have interns from the city hospital standing by with anti-venoms. Anti-venoms? Yes, yes. They're made from the venom itself often efficient in the treatment of snake bite. I see. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, where are you going now? I thought I'd go back to the Belvedere Hotel. Uh-huh. Be careful. I don't want to go through another autopsy. Doctor, I'll do my best to keep from being the next subject. Oh, by the way, this Dr. Cunningham, know anything about him? No, not much. His specialty doesn't interest me, but I know he was a famous herpetologist. Worked with Dr. Miller? I believe so. They developed a serum for the treatment of hemophilia. Miller said he was to address a medical convention here. You know anything about that? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, Cunningham was to speak, too. Oh. What about it? Well, I made some inquiries when I discovered the dead man was Cunningham. It seems he was about to present the medical profession with the results of his researches. Present? You mean give them away? Yes, why? Would those discoveries be worth anything? Well, if they're what I think they are, there's a fortune in them. I see. Why do you ask? I'm just curious. In fact, I'm very curious. Well, thank you, Doctor. If anyone here wants me, I'll be at the Belvedere Hotel. All right. And uh, remember what I said. That cobra is dangerous. And sometimes the anti venoms can't be administered in time. Well, maybe I should have told the police my idea, but I, I wasn't sure. I had to make sure because I had a hunch I was dealing with a very, very clever man. I went back to the Belvedere Hotel and spoke to Larkin, the manager. I don't know what to do, Mr. Holliday. There are police all over the hotel. The guests know there's something wrong. Oh, this will ruin the hotel. Maybe not, Mr. Larkin. Maybe we can prove there's no cobra loose in here. What? But, Dr. Miller, the death at the other hotel and... Yes, the death at the Moulton Hotel. But I've got a couple of ideas. Now listen. Could Miller have left the hotel without anyone seeing him? Why... Yes, of course. All right, let's 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 say he did. But what does that mean? Look, Miller's telegram to me was delivered at 5.15 today. The medical examiner placed Cunningham's death at some time before 5, no later. The Moulton Hotel is only two blocks from here, get it? No, unless you're implying that Dr. Miller had something to do with Dr. Cunningham's death. Maybe I am. There was a motive. Cunningham was going to announce the results of the discoveries and give them away. 
Those discoveries were worth a fortune. It's just possible that Dr. Miller isn't quite the idealist Cunningham was. He murdered him? I don't know. In Cunningham's room at the Molten, the police found two snakes, cobras. Oh, well, then one of them bit him. Maybe, but I don't think so. Cunningham knew how to handle snakes. Also, he would have had antivenin ready. Now, doesn't it strike you as peculiar that a man like Cunningham would rush down into the lobby? Panic? Mm-hmm. Nope. That wouldn't hold water. All his life, he'd handle snakes. If one bit him, he'd move quietly, get the anti-venom, and use it, not rush around in a panic. But what you're suggesting is that Miller deliberately... But it'll be hard to prove. We've got to go to the police. With what? My story? No, I've got a better idea. Well, what is it? You have a pass key to Miller's room, haven't you? Yes, of course. While you phone him, get him out of there on any pretext. Why? Please do it. You want this cleared up, don't you? Oh, well, yes, yes, of course. But but what'll I tell him? Get him into the basement. Tell him that one of your employees has seen the snake. That'll hold him down there at least until you and I are through in his room. His... His room? Mm-hmm. I've got an idea we'll find something very interesting. The ruse worked. While Miller went into the basement on a wild snake chase, Lark and I searched through his room. What are we supposed to be looking for, Mr. Holliday? I'm not sure I... Oh, look. A case of anti venom Miller has one. Cunningham would have been sure to have one. Well, now that you've found it, we'd better get out of here before he comes back. Not yet. Let's see what's in that closet. Oh, please hurry. Well? Well, well, well. Maybe I found something I've been looking for. Hmm. This leather bag. Well, what's in it? Well, it's rather heavy. And there are holes in the bottom. Now, why would a bag have holes in the bottom? Holes? Three guesses. But take only one. <laughs> That's all you need. The cobra. Yeah. Larkin, take a pillowcase from the bed, quickly. What are you going to do? Hurry up, get that pillowcase. Here. Here you are. Now what? We're going to dump the snake from the bag into this pillowcase. You... You're crazy. It'll bite us. No, no, it won't. It has to coil to strike. It won't be able to in the bottom of this case. Now, hold the pillowcase by the edge. With the mouth as wide open as you can get it. You're a fool. You're risking our lives. Snake won't strike. Now, get ready. Please, be careful. I'll do my best. I'm here too, remember? All right, ready? I'll open the catch of this leather bag. Now, here we go. <gasps> It was a snake. Hold that pillowcase as far away from your body as you can. What do we do with this? Is there a linen closet close by? Yes, in the corridor, outside. Okay, tie it out on the top of that pillowcase and put it in the linen closet. And lock the door. Yes, yes, of course. And warn your employees not to go near that closet. Mr. Holliday. What now? It's Dr. Miller, coming back. I won't be able to get to the linen closet without being seen. Get back in here, close the door. He has the house detective with him. Well, well, things couldn't be working out any better than they are. Mr. Holliday, I... I'm still holding this. Toss it under the bed, fast. Under the bed? Don't repeat everything I say, just do it. Straighten the bed while I put this leather bag back in the closet. Go on. If I ever get out of this alive, I'll personally search all baggage coming into this hotel in the future. There. Okay, now we're all set. Sit down, Mr. Larkin. Pretend as though we're just waiting here for Miller. I don't feel like sitting down. Then stand, but try to look as though nothing's happened. You asked the impossible, but I... Wait a minute. Tear that extension cord loose from the baseboard. And hand me that staple that held it. You're crazy. All right, get out of the way. What are you going to do with that U tack? Put it right here on the chair. Points outward, just about the height of Dr. Miller's ankles. There. That'll hold it, I hope. Oh, Mr. Holliday. Oh, any luck down the basement? No, some hysterical maid thought she saw the snake, but uh, it was not. Well, what now? We must think. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. The house detective here says that there's no other way but to get everyone out of the hotel. We can't do that, Miller. I'm trying not to. Dr. Miller, did you hear of Dr. Cunningham's death this afternoon? Yes. Yes, I did. I would have gone to him, but... I cannot leave here. Strange that a man of Cunningham's experience should have been so careless. Bitten by one of his own cobras. It's the chance we take. 
But he rushed down into the lobby. Doesn't he carry anti-venom with him? Yes, of course. Well, then why didn't he use it? I I don't know. He died at approximately 5 o'clock, just 15 minutes before your wife's me. Yes, that's probably so. But we're wasting time here. We should be looking for the cobra. Yes, I suppose we should be. But to get back to Dr. Cunningham, suppose now, now I'm saying suppose, someone went to him, someone who knew him. Suppose that someone took a cobra there and allowed it to strike Cunningham. Who would do a thing like that? Oh, someone who hated him because of what he was going to do. Throw away a fortune for the sake of humanity. You're crazy. Maybe. But it would be natural for the police to assume that Cunningham was bitten by one of his own snakes. (laughs) Not by yours. You know that mine is gone. Sure, to make it look as though it escaped here. You sent the wire to me so I'd be your alibi. Also, Larkin here was part of your alibi. (laughs) This is fantastic. I admit that. But it's fantastic enough to be true. You took the snake to Cunningham. When his back was turned, you allowed it to strike him. But first you took his antivenom. This is preposterous. I say the cobra you've been looking for is right here in this room. Get out of here. You're a madman. That description fits you better than it does me. Where are you going? We looked everywhere, but in this room. This closet. Keep out of there. What's this leather bag? Keep away from that. Why, it's just a bag and... Don't open it. Why not? It's empty. Look. Empty. You're a liar. No. No, I'm not. Look for yourself. The cobra. Don't you understand? It really is loose. Sit down, Dr. Miller. Sit down. You fool. What did you do with that snake? What snake? There was a cobra in there. Trying to kid me, Doctor? You told us it had escaped. Even helped us look for it. No, will you please believe me? There was a cobra in there. No. No, I don't believe you. And I said, sit down. (laughs) What's the matter? It was under this chair. It struck. Look, the marks on my legs, fangs. Holiday, please, hand me the antivenin, the case on the dresser. Did you hand it to Cunningham? You fool, I'll die! Cunningham's dead. Please, the case. I'll get it myself. Oh, no, you won't. Just a minute. Please, please, hand me the case. What about Cunningham? Yes, yes, I killed him, the fool. Hear that, Larkin? Yes, I heard it. Good. The case, please, please, the case. You won't need it, Miller. If you look down at the leg of the chair, you'll see I backed you into this. Tack. Uh-huh. Just a you tack. You know, Miller, you worked up a pretty good crime. But when you sent for me, you set me thinking. You should have been more careful with your story. Look! Under the bed! The snake! It's loose! Larkin, don't move. Well, Mr. Holiday, it looks as though we're all hoist by our own petard. You... House detective, get your gun out. If you move quickly, that cobra will strike. What will we do? (laughs) I'm the only one used to handling snakes. Would anyone else care to try it? Larkin, look. Right at your elbow on the dresser. What? That little pipe. The one Miller plays. Pick it up, but do it slowly. Slowly. I... I can't move. You've got to. (laughs) The cobra's moving toward you, Holiday. You're in the same boat, Miller. If you move, he'll go toward you. Think your way out of this one, Holiday. Lock and do as I say. Take that pipe. Reach for it slowly. Go ahead. Now. Now what do I do? Play it. I don't know how. (laughs) Go ahead, Mr. Larkin. You've got to, Larkin. Distract the snake's attention so the house detective can get his gun. Go on. You'll have to do better than that. I I can't. I... I don't have any breath. Stand still. Try it again. That's it, Larkin. Keep it up. He stopped crawling. Miller, stand still. Good boy, Larkin. You've got him coming toward you. Keep it up. Keep it up. Go on. Now. You. Get your gun. (sighs) Well. 
that seems to be that. And Dr. Miller, suppose you and I and the house detective take a little walk. And I'll tell you the first mistake you made. The one that made your whole story seem just a little false. So he told you something that set you to thinking. Well, what was it, Mr. Holliday? Well, it wasn't much, but it started the ball rolling. Well, please tell me. Hmm. Okay, Susie. He sent the wire to me, begged me to help him find the snake because time was precious. Now, when I got to him, he said the snake would be quiet for at least five or six hours. So, what was the big rush to get me there? Oh. Hmm. Good night, Susie. <laughs> Listen in again next week when, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, and this week's original story was written by Robert M. Light. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager, and the part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount picture.